Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about how to prevent an accidental shutdown of your Microsoft Access database. This one has actually been on my list for a while, but today in my forums on the website, Tyrone from the UK, one of my Silver members, posted this question, which is very similar. Tyrone says, when my users go to close a report in print preview mode, they click on that topmost X all the way up on the right to close Microsoft Access itself instead of closing the report. This shuts down the database. Do I need to educate them to use the correct close button? Or is there a way that when they click the wrong button, it can just close the report instead? Yes, we could definitely do that. Now, education is always the first step. That's always the first thing I recommend is teach your users properly. I'm a big fan of John Taffer and Bar Rescue. And the number one thing is you have to train your employees. That's what I do for a living, right? I t teach you guys. So training is definitely the most important thing. Teach them what to do. But it's always good to have a backup in case they forget. Even me, I forget stuff from time to time, right? So I build in little backups in my database to safeguard stuff like this. So let me show you what to do. Now, before we get into it, this is going to be a developer, developer, I love this tool, developer level video. So we are gonna use a little bit of VBA, not much, like three lines of code, but you gotta know where to put those three lines of code. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's my intro to VBA, it's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Now, if the user accidentally clicks that wrong close button to close access, we're gonna pop up a message box to ask them, are you sure? We're gonna say, this is gonna close the database. Are you sure you wanna do this? So we need to know how to use the message box. If you've never done that before, go watch this video on the message box. It prom prompts you for that, are you sure box, right? And you get the response back, how to handle that response. When we get that value from the message box, we have to parse it. We have to know what to do if they say yes say no, say cancel, right? So we'll need an if then statement to be able to process that response. And finally, we have to know where to trigger that message box to pop up. Now, we're going to use the forms on unload event. I'll explain why in a minute, but unload is very similar to something that happens in the before update event, before you update a field. So go watch this video first too, if you've never used the before update event. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them first and come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And here's what's happening. Tyrone's got a report that opens up. Let's open up my invoice report here. Now he's got them open up all of the stuff maximized. Okay, now with a report, you get this report print preview menu. And when they go to close this, instead of hitting this close print preview button, that's a training thing, right? Instead of hitting that, they're hitting this. They shut the whole database down because that's where they're thinking it's gotta go. Why? Because when you, if you have everything in your database maximized, like a lot of people do, it looks like this normally. And so people are used to, you know, the close buttons being up here. I like to give people buttons myself, like on the bottom, you know, put all the buttons you need down here or whatever, or in a spot where they're all in the same place. But instead of clicking on that, people click on this and shut the whole database down. So how do we prevent this? What do we do? Well, when you have this open, okay, I always have a main menu form open in the background. Okay, always. And you can disable the user's ability to close this menu, okay, by simply going into the properties here and on format, turn off the close box or the control box and the close button. Turn those off. Now the user cannot close the main menu. All right, it's always open. And it, they shouldn't have access to design mode. You can open it, you can close it by going to design view. Okay, but your user should not be able to do that if you're using a properly secured database. Go watch my simple security video for more information on that. I'll put a link down below. All right, now, since the only way that your users can close this main menu is by closing the database, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, if they try to close the database accidentally, right, it's going to close this menu because when the database closes, the first thing Access does is it goes and closes all of its objects. 
It closes all the open forms, closes all the open reports, the tables, the queries, and so on. And in so doing, it fires all of the events that are associated with those objects. So all we have to do is put an event handler on the main menu and say, hey, if the user attempts to close this menu, that assumes that they're trying to close the database, ask them if they're sure. And at that point, when they think that they're just closing this report, they're actually closing the database, then the form can say, hey, are you sure you want to do that? You sure? Oh, you're not? Okay, all right, forget it then. We just won't close down. And then they'll then hopefully we'll trigger their training and be like, ah, yeah, I clicked the wrong thing. All right, so how do we do this? So we're going to go into design view of the main menu, open up its property sheet. That'll bring up this guy over here, go to events. Now there's two events that fire, well, there's a bunch of events that fire, but there's two main events that fire when you close a report, right? When you open a report, there's load and open. And when it closes, there's unload and close. Now the difference is on close, if you look at it, let me click the dot, dot, dot button here, All right? On close is just a normal form close. This happens after you've already committed to closing the form. It's gone, it's done, goodbye, see ya, all right? The other one is called on unload. Where are you? Right down here, on unload. The difference between close and unload is that unload can be canceled. And you can do this if you want to check to make sure certain conditions have been met before you close it. Like I've got another video called prevent close. Uh, let's say you're putting in a loan application and you've got to make sure that the user types in, you know, their social security number, their principal. If they're missing any of that data, okay, you can prevent the user from closing the form right here with the unload event. Again, I'll put a link to that video down below as well. But you can also use form unload to cancel closing the form if by any other means like this, they accidentally try to close the form. So here we'll use a message box. We'll say if message box, we're going to Message box is a function, right? It's going to pop up a box and it's going to return what button they click on. So we're going to put a prompt in here. Warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson, All right? This will close the database. Are you sure? Yes or no? Okay, comma. The next is what do you want in the box itself? You can specify the little picture that goes in there. You can specify the buttons that you want. If you've watched my other video, I'm just going to use the line continuation there. I like VB yes, no cancel because it gives them the yes, no, and cancel buttons. And a lot of times if users aren't sure, they're not sure whether to answer yes or no, they'll just say cancel, which just, just aborts what they're doing. It's to, to prevent, you know, brain freeze. I like yes, no, cancel. All right. And then I'm going to add to that plus vb critical which gives you the little you know ah you know it's critical critical warning all right there's information there's exclamation point it's critical okay then what do you want for the title all right close database and ignore the rest of that stuff all right so close that so message box is going to return a value so we're going to say if message box something 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 all right if they don't answer yes all right, so if it's not equal to VB yes, then they've indicated either no or cancel at this point. We're going to cancel the event, cancel equals true, and exit sub. Technically, you don't need the exit sub there because it's going to drop out of the if then anyways, but I always put the exit sub there in case later on you decide to put more stuff down here and you don't realize it. Okay. All right, let's give it a quick debug compile. Everything's good. Let's close it. Let's close this. Save changes, yes. Close everything down. Restart the main menu. I got a little button up here on my toolbar that does it. Okay. Let's open up that report. Orders. Open up the report. Okay, now at this point, I forget that I got to click on this guy. So instead, I click on this guy. Oh, and what's happening? It's trying to close the main menu in the background, right? When you try to close the database. It says, warning, this will close the database. Are you sure? Uh, no. And it leaves it open. All right, so now the user can hopefully remember and click the close button. All right, but if they do want to close the database, it says, warning, this will close the database. Are you sure? If they hit cancel, it obviously cancels. If they hit yes, it shuts the database down, just like they wanted. See that? 
And that will happen anytime, anywhere that they try to close the database. Just to make sure. Are you sure you want to close the database? Yeah, okay. That's it. Now, is there a way we could just shut that invoice down if it sees the reports open? Yeah, of course there is. We can loop through all of the reports in the database and check to see if any of them are open. And if that's the case, just shut those down, assuming that the user meant to do that instead. I meant to do that, right? It's like Pee Wee. And I'll show you some tricks for hiding that print preview ribbon if you don't like it in the first place. All right. We'll talk about all that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's hundreds of them by now, so lots of stuff to learn. Gold members can download these databases and you get access to the code vault. If you want to learn more cool Microsoft Access developer programming, I've got lots of developer training available on my website. I just released Access Developer Level 43. I've got a lot of them by now. Uh, hundreds of hours of training, and you learn in the right way. None of this jumping around between different videos. I just teach you, you know, A, B, C, D. You follow along with me. We have a good time. We learn how to program and build databases, and you get a raise. Well, that the raise isn't, isn't promised. Hopefully, if your employer is smart and you get better at building your databases, you get a raise, right? Hopefully. Send them to me if they, if they don't want to give you a raise. I'll take care of them. I'll tell them where to go. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Come join us for the after party in the members only extended cut. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, 
I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.